this is the hardest video I have ever made in my life. I don't even know where to start. I have cried. I don't even know if this is the best decision that I'm making. I've doubted myself so much, going back and forth, changing my mind over and over. But after all that, I finally decided this is it. Somewhere along the way Somehow we ended up At a crossroad and we got lost Somewhere you chose to go left While I turned the thought I'll be making this video. It's honestly been a battle. On one hand, I feel like I'm betraying myself and going back on my word. You know, there is a time when I told myself and even shared with you all on this platform that I would never want to live anywhere else in the world but Kenya. But life, life has a way of surprising us. And as I have traveled and experienced different places, I've come to realize something. My happiness and mental well-being comes first. And right now, I feel happiest in some places outside Kenya. Sad to say, but. Kenya has always been home. The place that shaped me and gave me everything I needed to pursue my dreams. But as I've traveled the world and seen how people create lives in different places, I've realized it's possible to have more than one home. So this isn't about abandoning everything I have built here. Kenya will always be a part of me. This is about exploring the possibility of finding a second home, a place where I can also feel grounded and fulfilled. Tried so hard to be fearless at times And I didn't know what I might find Or what I'd miss if I didn't go If I didn't go I've always been afraid of the shadows Never really Before I get into the details of my relocation plan, let me give you a little background. I don't know how long you've been following me on this channel, but a few years ago, when I started traveling, I made a very big choice. I sold almost everything I had 
except for this little studio that I'm recording from right now. It became my sanctuary. That one place I could always return to in Kenya. Over the years, I have filled it with things that mean a lot or that mean the world to me. You know, items that I've collected from my different travels. And during lockdown, when creativity and fashion projects got me through, so I self-made or like handmade a couple of things. I had so many passion projects or some things, lots of things that I've made out of passion in this place. Letting go of some of these things is honestly heartbreaking. But it is part of this journey. Today we are packing my camping gear. This unit might have been so tiny, but it really held a lot of things for me. So look at all this. These are my camping gear. I have a very big tent. I'm going to see if I'll be able to insert a video of the last time we went camping. So look at that. This is a nine, see, nine person tent. So I want to move these ones today. I have my camping seats here, the foldable seats. I have two of them. Got my sleeping bag. I got my foldable grill. So these are the things that I'm focusing on moving today. And then I do have some equipment in here. So I just have to sample and see what's going, what's remaining. Some are not camping stuff, but some are. Like I have skewers from the last time when I went camping, what remains? So I got some skewers here. No more skewers here. Of course, we got the Swiss knife here. Oh my goodness, my hammocks. Man, I love my hammocks. The camping here. Oh, these cups. <laughs> yeah. Foldable cups. I have wrestled with the idea of leaving Kenya for so long especially considering the amount of energy and investment that I have poured and I still pour. If you know me, you know I do have some ongoing projects in Kenya. So this is really a very difficult decision considering that amount of energy and investment that I've poured into my life here. For years, I convinced myself that these roots would actually be enough to keep me here, that I could keep staying and building in Kenya. But as hard as it is to admit, it just doesn't feel like home in the same way anymore. Kenya is where my roots are. It's where my family, culture, identity are deeply embedded. But as I've grown, I've realized that home isn't just one place. It's wherever you feel peace, connection, and a sense of belonging. Lately, I found myself wondering if that sense of belonging could exist in more than just one place.
there is another part in this story. I don't really have close friends here anymore. I know. I know making friends is always possible, but it's been tough for me, especially because I always have like a small circle and a small circle could just be one person at a time. <sighs> Even the last friend that I made here less than a year ago has already relocated. I feel like everyone who gets close to me ends up with life-changing opportunities abroad and they go for them and I'm so happy for them. I have acquaintances for sure but I believe a friend is someone who will show up for you no questions asked. Those kind of connections are very very rare and with my travel schedule, it's nearly impossible to keep that kind of closeness here. So, I got these three suitcases for about 8,600 Kenyan shillings. So affordable, such a good deal. And that's about 60 something US dollars. 67 about 67 US dollars so we got this one i think this is about 30 carries up to 30 kilos then oh my goodness and let's talk about family that's probably been the hardest part in the early days of this channel you might have seen me on some of family road trips, filling up, driving across Kenya with my sisters and cousins. We used to have dinners, we used to surprise each other. It was, it was beautiful and those memories will always be with me. But over time, one by one, everyone started moving for work, school and new lives in other places. Those road trips and gatherings slowly stopped and our lives took different directions. These days we are all scattered around the world, living busy lives, working so hard and I'm so proud of everyone. But the reality is, you know, with more success also comes with less time to bond and I really miss those days. There's also the reality of living in Kenya today. Every time I turn on the news, I feel a mix of sadness and frustration. We have cases that uh, people have disappeared and we've not been able to find them. And so it, it's just a chilling um, illustration of what people fear is yet to come. I feel this heaviness. Stories of young people losing their lives, government critics disappearing, Rising cases of femicide, each story takes a toll and for someone who is very opinionated, it's very hard to feel safe or secure. And, you know, also as someone who's always prioritized mental health, these constant reminders of unrest and suffering really affect me. It's just hard to ignore. Exploring the idea of a second home isn't just about the physical space, it's also finding a community where I can feel supported and connected. The Kenya National Human Rights Commission says it's investigated some 60 cases of extrajudicial killings and 71 cases of abductions and enforced disappearances since mass protests swept the country in June. For weeks, young Kenyans, the so-called Gen Z, led protests over poor governance, now, the events turned violent during a resulting police crackdown, which activists say has not ended. Meant to arrest the rising cases of murders of women and girls across the country. Human rights organizations, including the Federation of Women Lawyers of Kenya, FIDA, now want these femicide cases, which currently stand at 30, declared a national disaster. In the suspect of the said murder. She is amongst the nearly 10 women who have been killed in just a fortnight across the country and a multitude others from the beginning of this year. This June, government proposed tax increase prompted protests in Nairobi and sometimes violent response from the police. 
this is one of the most vulnerable videos i've ever made if you know me you know i'm usually very private about my feelings and personal life so please be kind in the comments i don't want to turn them off this decision wasn't easy it's not about abandoning kenya i love this country and it will always be my home but sometimes you have to listen to that inner voice that's telling you it's okay to explore other places to find somewhere you feel at peace i'm not looking for a perfect place i know every country has its challenges but maybe just maybe we all deserve the chance to choose the kind of struggles or challenges that you want to face and like I said, I'm not abandoning Kenya completely. I have so much at stake in this country and I'm just exploring the possibility of having a second place that I can actually call home. Thank you for being part of this journey. I hope you'll continue to join me as I take this next step, wherever the road may lead me. In the next couple of episodes, I'll be showing you some of the activities and some of the things that I'll be doing in preparation for living. Yeah, this isn't goodbye. It's simply the start of a new chapter and Kenya will always be in my heart no matter where I go.